Inside an empty store, Carol is trying to consume any medicine or energy drink she can find in order to try to keep her body awake while dangerous forces keep banging on a door, trying to reach her. This mess started a few days ago. On its way back to Earth, a space shuttle suddenly explodes and its pieces scatter across many states in the USA. Soon all media outlets are covering the news, saying it's a sign of alien invasion. Most people become terrified and hesitate to touch the debris, but there are still lots of opportunists that sell what they can salvage on eBay. Tucker, head of the Center for Disease Control, arrives at one of the crash sites for inspection and learns that a piece of debris is laced with a mysterious organism that has the ability to withstand enormous levels of radiation. The organism can also multiply at a rapid rate, implying that it is from another planet. On his way out, Tucker accidentally touches a small piece of debris and receives a cut on his finger, but he doesn't think much of it and leaves. Later that evening, Tucker goes home, only to find his dog growling at him, before ignoring him for no reason. When he goes to bed, Tucker's body starts sweating profusely and experiences an intense cellular condensation on the face, as if something has taken over him. Meanwhile Tucker's ex-wife Carol hears her son Oliver screaming because of a nightmare. She immediately rushes to his room to wake him up and stays with him to comfort him for the rest of the night. The next morning, Carol gets a call from Tucker asking to see his son, which is not normal for him. Carol says no and hangs up. Afterward, Carol drops Oliver at school and goes to her office, where she works as a psychiatrist. On her way there, she runs into her best friend Ben, who offers to give her a ride. Ben is a doctor, and he shares with Carol the fact that the government is hiding something serious from them, as all the researchers on the crash site have resigned. Carol is in no mood for politics and complains about Tucker instead, commenting on how he has been acting very strange lately and how he suddenly wants to see their son after being away for four years. As soon as she makes it to her office, Carol sees her first patient Wendy, who shares that her husband has been acting very weird lately. A few days ago, he came to their home and the dog, who usually is a good boy, started growling at him for no reason, and her husband just killed the poor creature without showing any emotion. Carol immediately realizes that something is wrong, but for now, she just prescribes a new medicine for Wendy. In the evening, Carol and her neighbor take their children out for trick-or-treating. When they approach certain house, the family dog starts barking like crazy, and the owner swears it's a good pet the rest of the time. The group tries to leave, but suddenly the dog lunges toward one of the boys and tackles him to the ground. The boy doesn't seem bothered though, in fact he squeezes the dog's mouth with his bare hands until the owner comes to take the dog away. It's revealed the boy is wounded, but he still keeps a poker face. Afterward the group goes to Carol's home and while the boys share the candy, the neighbor shares that her son has been acting very strange the last few days, almost as if he has lost his emotions. Suddenly, Oliver starts screaming from another room, and when Carol rushes to him, she finds a strange piece of flesh coming out of his hand that he got from the candy. The next morning, Carol sees a terrified woman running through the streets but ignores her. She takes the strange flesh to Ben, who shares it with his scientist friend Stephen. He promises to take a look, but the testing will take a while. Meanwhile a mysterious virus has started to spread through the country causing lots of death every day, but nobody knows the cause. Soon an emergency meeting is held in the capital and Tucker explains that the new virus is spreading at an unprecedented rate, so if they don't do anything about it, the country will go into recession. When some researchers ask about a possible solution, Tucker says that the only way to stop the spread is by conducting an inoculation program. Meanwhile many infected waiters throw up right into the tea that they are going to serve to the guests. After leaving the hospital, Carol notices a homeless guy having a seizure on the streets, but unlike the terrified woman he's being helped. When she makes it to her office, Carol is shocked to find Wendy's husband there, and he refuses to leave until he sees his wife. He also never shows any emotion as he speaks. Carol calls Wendy to warn her and saves her from entering the building, so Wendy takes a taxi to stay with her sister instead. Later that night, Carol reluctantly decides to let Oliver spend time with Tucker since it's his right as the father. On their way to Tucker's house, a terrified woman suddenly appears in the middle of the road, luckily Carol hits the brakes just in time. The woman desperately asks for help as she insists that something terrible will happen soon, but before she can add more details, a car suddenly runs her over. Carol notices the driver still keeps a poker face during such a horrible accident, and when the cops arrive at the scene, she immediately wants to testify against him. However the head cop simply tells her to go home because they have this covered, which Carol finds weird. Moments later, Carol drops Oliver at Tucker's place, noticing her ex doesn't show much emotion on his face before she leaves. Afterward she meets Ben to attend a very fancy party, where they have a very philosophical conversation with diplomat Belisek, his wife Ludmila, and Dr. Yurish. After the party, Ben takes Carol home and tries to kiss her, but Carol soon breaks the kiss because she doesn't want to ruin their friendship. Once inside, Carol sends Oliver a message and suddenly hears someone at the door. She only opens it a bit and finds a man asking questions for the census department, which doesn't make sense at this hour. Carol tries closing the door in his face, but the man puts his hand inside, triggering a struggle between the two of them. At last Carol wins and locks the door, causing the man to go away. 
Meanwhile Oliver gets to play with his friend Jean, who says his father is behaving weirdly, and Oliver thinks the same about his own. When he goes home, Oliver finds Tucker making a special drink for him. The next morning, Carol notices lots of people on the streets have blank stares on their faces, almost as if their soul has been taken away. When she reaches her office, she is shocked to learn that all her clients have cancelled their appointments for the day. Carol tries to call Wendy, but her husband picks up, saying that everything is fine. This makes Carol think about all the things she's been seeing and realizes the virus is controlling people. When she begins googling some information on it, she's suddenly startled by her secretary, who offers some tea. Before she can drink it, Carol gets a call from Ben, who informs her that the test results of the strange skin patch are ready. Carol immediately goes to the lab, where Stephen explains that the skin sample is made up of several molecular spores that take over the human brain during sleep and alter the genetic code, rendering a person unstable. This means that in order to prevent the deadly infection, they are forbidden from sleeping until they find a cure. At that moment, Ludmila calls Ben to tell him that Yurish has been acting strangely. This causes the trio to immediately rush to his house, and Carol notices the long lines on the streets where people are waiting to get vaccinated against the new virus. When they make it to Yurish's, they find him in bed with his body going through a grotesque transformation. Carol tries taking a picture of him, but suddenly the monster-like man wakes up and attacks her. Ben quickly pushes Yurish away, causing him to drag his body away before vomiting a weird liquid and dying. Afterward Carol is too worried about her son possibly being exposed to this mess and rushes to Tucker's house to pick up Oliver. When she arrives, she finds Tucker in a meeting with his associates and immediately asks about her son. Tucker says that Oliver is playing at jeans, but Carol doesn't believe him and starts looking for Oliver around the house. At that moment, the men from the meeting surround Carol, who gets scared and tries to run, but Tucker quickly tackles her to the ground and infects her with his saliva. Fortunately Carol manages to push him away and runs through the back door to escape. She tries asking the neighbors for help, but they're infected as well. Then she gets to her car, only to find the road blocked on every side and she ends up crashing. When she gets out of her car, she is chased by a group of infected people, so she reaches the main avenue and tries to ask for help. Everyone ignores her, so she decides to enter a subway station. Carol gets on the train and finds it full of passengers with the same vague expressions. At that moment her phone rings and she sees a message from Oliver, who asks her to save him because Tucker has hidden him somewhere. This puts Carol on the edge of a breakdown, and one of the passengers reveals he isn't infected, everyone there is acting emotionless so the infected people will ignore them, and he advises her to do the same. Suddenly, a group of infected people enters the wagon, so Carol and the other sane passengers run to the end of the train and close the door. The infected ones press the emergency button to make the train stop before breaking down the door to start infecting the passengers, so Carol opens the back door and jumps off the wagon, escaping by running through the tunnel until she reaches the locker room of a station. There she finds a guard's gun, and when said guard approaches her, she gets too scared and shoots him by accident. Terrified, Carol drops the gun and crosses the station, keeping a poker face to pretend to be infected. When she makes it back to the street, she watches some cops catching the uninfected citizens to force them to take the vaccine, which is actually Tucker's trick to pass the virus to everyone. At that moment an uninfected cop notices the sweat on Carol's face and tells her to go away quickly because the sweat will give her away. Carol starts walking away and bumps into her neighbor, who offers the shot to her. Luckily Carol's acting convinces her that she's already gotten the vaccine. Afterward Carol goes to Tucker's house, only to find it empty. She leaves a message for Oliver before going out again, and she finds a bunch of people watching a couple end things for themselves. Carol makes sure not to react and keeps going until she reaches the Belisek mansion, where Ben and Stephen are still conducting some tests. After a bit of discussion, Ben decides to help Carol find her son while Stephen and his assistant prepare to travel to Fort Detrick in Maryland to find a cure for the virus. They also decide to stay awake, fearing that they might have been infected if they fall asleep. At that moment Belisek comes back and Ludmill receives him with a hug, but Belisek is infected and worried about potential intruders, so he lets a bunch of guards get inside. Luckily Carol and the others see this on the security cameras and escape through the back door. When they reach the streets, they notice Wendy being forcefully taken away by infected cops. She tries fighting against them, yelling that she slept yet she was still okay, but the cops knock her out anyway. After the group splits, Carol and Ben chat about Wendy's words and deduce that Wendy has somehow developed an immunity to the virus. Then the duo finds a dead cop on the ground, so they steal his car and go to Carol's office, where they begin searching through Wendy's medical profile. Ben finds out that Wendy was suffering from a brain illness called encephalitis, and that's why she's immune, the virus only tends to attack healthy brains so that it can feed and multiply its number. Ben calls Stephen at the lab to give him this new information while Carol gets another text from Oliver mentioning that he's being held at his grandmother's home in Baltimore. Scared, Carol confesses to Ben that she has already been infected with the virus, but Ben promises that everything will be alright. Afterward, Ben drives like a maniac to the city, crossing blocked roads until he has no choice but to let Carol go so the police will chase him instead. 
Carol continues on foot, and when a cop stops her, she presents her ID with a poker face and is allowed to leave. Eventually Carol reaches the station and boards the train to Baltimore, where she hides in the bathroom. The lack of sleep is starting to take its toll on her and she starts having visions, like seeing a second self in the mirror that wants to attack her. She wakes up just in time and after washing away a piece of that strange flesh, she opens the door to find Jean, who explains he lost his family and now he's part of hers. He keeps asking her to sleep, and Carol pretends she'll do exactly that but in private. Once the train reaches Baltimore, Jean checks on her again and finds her removing more flesh pieces from her body, so he stays suspicious. Tucker comes to escort Carol and Jean to his mother's place, believing Carol's emotionless act. Oliver isn't around, but Carol continues to act around the family, and when she gets a call from Ben, she talks in code pretending it's her secretary. When Tucker finally leaves for work, Carol uses the opportunity to search the house and finally finds Oliver in a room. The two of them hesitate at first, but once Carol says a couple of emotional words to confirm she's fine, they reunite with a hug. Oliver mentions that he's been sleeping every day but still hasn't transformed, and Carol realizes the medications for his sleeping disorder have made him immune. Suddenly Jean catches them red-handed, but Carol easily pushes him away and rushes out with her son. On their way out, Tucker sees them through the window and immediately goes after them, starting a chase through the streets. Oliver finds a broken window in an abandoned warehouse and they hide there, but Tucker comes inside too. While he monologues like a bad villain, Carol tries to sneak to the door, but Tucker catches her from behind and tries to knock her out. Oliver cuts in and hits his dad with a metal tool, so Tucker captures him instead. This gives Carol the chance to hit him on the head and knock him out, allowing them to escape. Afterward Carol and Oliver hide inside an empty department store. Carol searches the medicine section and finds an injection, which she shows to Oliver as she explains she wants him to inject her heart with it if she ever falls asleep. Then they go looking for some food and Carol gets a call from Ben, who learns about their location and promises to pick them up soon. While his mother's busy on the call, Oliver slowly approaches a door with blood splattered nearby, but luckily Carol stops him before he can open it. Instead she goes inside herself and finds multiple people on the ground going through the transformation. The group includes a cop, so Carol very carefully comes closer to take his gun before rushing outside and locking the door, telling Oliver to stay away from it. Hours start to pass while they wait for Ben, and while Oliver sleeps, Carol desperately searches for anything she can use to stay awake, going back to the beginning of the story. Unfortunately this isn't enough and Carol falls asleep anyway. Eventually the infected people inside the room wake up and begin hitting the door as they try to get out. The noise wakes Oliver up and he discovers her mother has fallen asleep, so he immediately injects her with the syringe, which wakes her up and cancels the transformation just in time. Then Carol washes the weird flesh off her face and leaves the bathroom to discover Ben has finally arrived. She rushes to hug him, only to realize he's been infected too. Carol backs away as Ben invites Carol to join the new society that will have no crime, hate, or discrimination. A terrified Carol points her gun at him, but Ben still opens the door and lets out all of the other infected people, before mentioning that they hate immunity as he points at Oliver. The group tries to capture the child so Carol begins shooting quickly, killing them one by one. However she can't bring herself to kill Ben, so she just shoots him in the leg and runs away with Oliver. Outside, they take Ben's car to escape. While Carol drives like crazy, she gets a call from Stephen, who gives her an address where a helicopter will be waiting for them. When she reaches the main street, she finds herself surrounded by cars and she crashes, causing her to lose consciousness. Lots of infected people now surround the car and Oliver locks the doors before shaking Carol until she wakes up. A man manages to break a window but before he can infect them, Carol speeds up and pushes the people away to escape. There are still a few crazy ones hanging on the roof of the car, so Carol drives like a maniac and hits things on purpose to make them fall. There are also police cars hitting hers until they make her crash, sending the last few attackers flying against a shop window. Luckily the car is fine and Carol keeps driving while getting directions from Steven through the phone. An affected man throws a Molotov bomb at her car, but Carol still drives with the vehicle on fire, not stopping until they make it to the parking lot of the right building. The car crashes against a pillar, so Carol and Oliver go out and run to the elevator, where they're almost reached by the enemy. They hit them and push them away, allowing for the doors to close. The duo finally makes it to the roof, where Steven and his army buddies rescue them in a helicopter. Sometime later, scientists outside the USA have finally created a vaccine, and thanks to it the alien virus has been eradicated from the entire world, allowing life to be normal again. As the main scientist behind the vaccine, Steven explains to the press that the vaccinated people will have no memories of the earlier events. Meanwhile Carol has adopted Jean and she is now in a relationship with Ben. While the boys leave for school, Ben reads the newspaper and comments on the violent crimes committed by people, which leaves Carol thinking about the alien's offer of peace. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. So feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one, bye.